Okay, so just gonna give a little bit of a rundown on emblems here. So there's 10 different categories that the heroes are grouped into. Most of the healers will be in the medic class. And the support heroes like Jacob that buff up your team seem to be in uh, the support emblem category. So emblems are a great thing to keep on strengthening up your heroes. If you're taking on 10 star war machines, they can uh, certainly help them stay alive longer. Um, most people are going to emblem up their main defense. So that means we're going to start seeing 4,200 teams and plus pretty soon, as soon as people can get the emblems to do it. I haven't put any emblems on anybody yet. I don't think I'm going to for a little bit, even though I could just use Jocasta here for an example. I could, I could fill out her first one here. So it's qu quite pricey to use emblems. I think it's somewhere around 1500 for a 5 star to fully emblem them all the way down to 20 here. So, and as you can see, 65 to start. 50, 50. So there's 165 and you're only 3 levels in. Now, so I guess kind of pick your poison, right? Uh, most people go for whoever's going to be on their defense just to strengthen them up, their raid defense or their war defense or both. In my case, I use pretty much the same heroes for both war and raid defenses. So I pretty much stick to the same heroes for that. So when I do use the emblems, they're most likely going to go to those heroes that are on my defense. So good rule of thumb here. If it's an attacking hero, go down the attack path. So you see you got two paths you can pick. So the first one always is the class they're in, whatever class they're in, it will be that first. So for the healers, it's the healing spray, which is kind of funny, healing spray. And then we got Tal in here who's sentry class. So the sentry is armor. So that first one will always be whatever class they're in that will be the buff that they get. Assault class is the wound, which is pretty cool um, because it, it also stacks with similar effects. So that's awesome. If I ever uh, played him on the same team as um, Dasha here, she wounds in her, she does the bleed in her, uh, part of her special. And so that would stack if both of them hit at the same time. Double stack on that. That's pretty cool. And Warfighter revives. So basically I'm going to go back to Jocasta here. Basically she's a healer, so not a striker, so you would want to go down this path. Keep her alive as much as possible, so keep giving her the health bonus and the defense bonus. Buff, buff her up. She stays alive longer, which means she's going to be around to heal your team longer, which means your team stays alive longer. 
So for me, I would go down these two first, this side. Then we're back to the special for the uh, class that they're in. And then I would go here, probably give her more health. Now you're going to come across ones that are attack no matter what, so that's fine. But in all honesty, unless she's on my defense, she's never going to attack somebody. And being on defense, she all she's going to do is tap them when it's her turn, right? To tap them, otherwise she's going to be too busy healing my team. So again, now this one, I'm not sure which which I would take here. Increase defenses by 17 points. Or you got increase health by 36. Well, I'd probably stick with health, honestly. So, and there's another health bonus. Health. Wow. Okay, I had quite a bit of health to her. Now, the other thing is when you get down to, when you see... It's unfortunate these two are both side by side, like you gotta pick one. But again, she's not an attacking hero, so the crit bonus wouldn't do a heck of a lot because she's not gonna be hitting. Now, if she was a hitter though, that would be a good one to pick. Whenever you see this one though, I, I always pick it. So the charge bonus means it's going to take less tiles to charge her up. She's slow charging to begin with, so I always try and put a speed weapon on her, which helps decrease the amount of tiles thrown that you need for her to charge. So when you're on offense, so you pick this, it's going to take even less tiles thrown to charge her up. So functionally you could end up making her more of an average speed instead of a slow speed hero so that's not too bad but that's definitely something to keep in mind i always pick the, the charge speed in uh, empires and puzzles a couple times i went and picked something different than the charge speed for a couple of them and then I figured out after I'm like oh he doesn't charge as fast as this one because I didn't pick the charge speed bonus so it uh, it definitely does help now so for somebody who's a striking hero Then you'd want to pick the attack bonus. Increasing that by 50 point, 15 points every time you get to pick the attack bonus is pretty awesome. It just makes their special that much harder when it hits, right? Now he's not... his defenses are terrible. Minimoto's defenses. So I would go down here and here pick that one and then you got attack and defense so that's awesome to increase his defense so I'd do that as much as possible boom boom another attack up and defense which is really good now the crit bonus is right in the middle right on so with the salt class you get the crit bonus no matter what that's pretty cool that's a cool option because yeah anytime you can increase damage go for it and then where's the speed oh the speed charge is way down here yeah so even though he doesn't have the greatest defenses I would still pick this path I would still pick the charge bonus He's fast to begin with, and that just makes him that much more faster to charge. So that's pretty awesome. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Now, you can, you can put them on 
three stars. You can put them on any, any of them really. If you do put them on three stars and you need them later, you can always use the reset. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a waste. Myself, I won't be putting them on too many three stars. That's for sure. Uh, generally speaking, only the three stars get used for the challenge event. So, in my case anyway, I'm... When you're first starting out though, it's it's a heck of a lot cheaper as you can see 14 to start instead of 65 that's quite a difference so if it helps you as you get more four and five stars leveled up you can always use the reset when you go to reset them you it'll give you the option to use a reset token so that's that's a great option because then you're gonna get a hundred percent of all the emblems back you will never get back the food and iron though. And a, a three star isn't too intense on on those resources, but yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. That that is not going to be returned to you, but you can fully get 100% of the emblems if you use a reset token. If you don't have a reset token to use, you can spend a few gems I think it is to get more back or gold I should say I'm not sure how that works actually I haven't reset a hero in a really long time once I put emblems on them I generally speaking leave them on that hero so another thing you'll run across is where they're the same exact same category and you gotta kinda pick who you want to have the emblems so both coyote and jacosta are medic classes so in all honesty i'm probably going to split emblems between the two of them because i always use them for war every single war they're on one of my teams so uh, not a lot of people like splitting the emblems. They like concentrating on one hero of the class, which is, again, mostly their defense, who they're going to use on their defense. But, um, yeah, I like I like the fact that you can buff up so many different heroes of the same class by splitting the emblems. I, I'm a fan of doing that, but I know a lot of people aren't. So, to each their own. You know, like, um, as more and more emblems uh, come out and there's more, eventually, hopefully, more emblems will be awarded, then that means the teams are just going to get stronger and stronger. And so you have, you're going to have a harder time in wars and that sort of thing if you don't have more emblem heroes, I feel, anyway. That's why I kind of split them amongst the heroes uh so i think that's a basic rundown of emblems and just a few things to keep in mind so um there's the reset emblems there i have two of them so far i think most people probably will have two they will award reset emblems every once in a while when you get to the emblem quests when you get to the end stage so that's kind of a neat option too that they do award them once in a while and they should come out in war chests and that sort of thing as well um yeah so i can't think of anything else right off hand but uh yeah just a few things to keep in mind and if there's heroes that you use all the time like put emblems on them because i was kind of thinking of uh putting a few emblems on some of the four stars as well that I use constantly so and that's again like I say I'm a fan of splitting them all up and just kind of buffing a whole bunch of different heroes rather than just my uh, defense although my defense will remain a priority but they're not getting down to 20 anytime soon so that's why I don't really worry about it. 
Hopefully there'll be options later on to kind of make emblems as well. You can, and empires and puzzles for anybody that plays that. You have the alchemy lab where you can turn in shards and get emblems. I do that quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to having something like that in here in the near future. Because yeah, emblems are going to be something everybody's going to be racing for now. So it's kind of, there's some pretty neat categories. And uh, yeah, so we'll see how that plays out. It, it does kind of add more depth and dimension to the game, which is pretty cool. I was hoping they wouldn't introduce them for a while though. <laughs> Seeing as how the game's not even in worldwide release yet, I was hoping they were uh, going to put that off for a while because this just, yeah, it's going to be really hard for new people to start pretty soon because uh, there'll be a long time catching up. You, c you can catch up, but man, oh man, take a lot of grinding to do. Oh, look at that. Anything good? A lot of loot, but not, <laughs> not much. This is kind of long barrel. That's all right. Eh, kind of trashy loot. 110k for metal. That's pretty good though. Right now, I haven't bought the VIP in ages. I haven't, I really don't spend a heck of a lot on this game, but I thought, oh, I'd really like to get both weaponsmiths up to level 10 as soon as possible. So this is going to be level 8 in three days. And That'll be level 8 in a day. So hopefully my iron will recover enough that I can get this one to level 9 in 24 hours. We'll see. So yeah, when that, uh, when I'm done the weaponsmiths completely, I'll do a video about that one. I would really like to uh, get to 10 and get that researched and get a couple of, uh, get a hopefully get a couple of five star weapons from it at some point. I'm sure it'll probably take a while anyway, but yeah, so hopefully that helps everybody uh, with the emblems and uh, yeah, have fun with it. They are a nice aspect to the game. Like I said, I was just hoping they'd uh, wait a little bit longer, but yeah, just a few things to keep in mind there. So if it's a striking hero, take the striking route. And uh, if it's a defensive hero, take the uh, health and defensive rope. Those are your best options to kind of buff up the specials that they have. So, alrighty, I will see everybody for War Wednesday tomorrow.